know if you if you follow it that closely at this point, uh, Senator, but. It's, it's truly a phenomenon that looks like it's here to stay, and it's not just uh, that name. We're seeing it a lot of places. What, what, what do you need to know? Well, uh, look, I, I, I'm interested in what we're going to hear. I, I think from our colleagues on the other side and some of the witnesses, we're going to hear that, uh, you know, un basically unsubstantiated class warfare about how the system is rigged against the little guy. Um, there's a lot of criticism about gamification, as you know, the idea that um, you make the experience of investment enjoyable and easy is somehow a problem for some folks, not for me. Um, we might get into a discussion about payment for order flows and whether that's a good execution mechanism. Um, there might be some discussion about shorting uh, regulations. Look, my view is the democratization of these markets has been fantastic. Zero commissions, extremely narrow bid offer means retail investors can buy into stocks in a way they never could before, being able to buy a fraction of a share, for instance. This is why over half of Americans are now investors when 10, 20 years ago it was a small fraction. It's really very, very good. And I don't believe in this paternalistic idea that we have to protect people from themselves and not let them invest. Um, I, I think we should celebrate these innovations. Celebrate them and, and just so Wild Wild West, just let it go. Yeah, let, yeah. It, let it happen. I'm, you know, we've got a witness apparently that, you know, it, there, there's the suggestion that because GameStop is obviously overpriced, people, the SEC should do something about stopping people from investing in it. Well, I, I don't know. Was Tesla fairly, fairly priced at 1,500 times earnings? Is it fairly priced today at, at 1,000 times earnings? I don't know. Neither does the SEC. Neither of us should be telling people what they can buy and what they can't buy. But what about, and, and I, they, they'll, you can come up with other examples, obviously, when people get together and decide uh, on, a, on an investment theme and, and move it. But the power of social media and being able to aggregate so many people to do the same thing and, and you know, all act in concert, which you know, brings up the, the, at least the perception it's some kind of pump and dump from years ago, except it's got a new flavor because it's on, uh, on a social media site. That There's no merit to that argument? So I don't think so. I, I don't know how sustainable this is. Look, I do think GameStop was a classic bubble, and it still looks like it's wildly overpriced. That's just my opinion. Um, but I, it's not at all clear to me that any laws or regulations were broken and I'm not sure what you would do about people who are, look, fraud is illegal and it should be, and it should be prosecuted. Uh, dishonest uh, information about companies, that's illegal, it should be. But a group of people coming together and saying, hey, there's a big short on this company, let's, let's buy it and squeeze them out. Really, we're gonna try to ban that somehow? I will say there's one thing I think we should be looking at, and that is shortening the settlement cycle uh, waiting two days from the time that a trade is executed to the time that it actually clears introduces risk into the system. And, and I think we could diminish that risk and that would be beneficial. Uh, but, but limiting people's freedom to make investment decisions, uh, that doesn't sound like a good idea to me. All right. Sen toss, it Senator, toss it over to Andrew. Andrew. Senator, it, my understanding is it, it is illegal if, if you and myself and Joe and Becky decided that we were going to uh, make a decision as a group to go buy shares of Apple or Tesla or whatever, um, whether it's a short squeeze or not, if we have this conversation together uh, and then we go and we, we buy up a significant uh, amount of shares, that unto itself, uh, under the current law, is not allowed. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but that strikes me as a very, very broad interpretation of the law, Andrew. Aren't there investment clubs where people get together all the time and they discuss ideas? And I imagine sometimes a consensus emerges and everybody goes out and buys a stock. Are, are those people all routinely breaking the law? No, in that case, these are those would be independent decisions made by independent actors. The issue is whether you do it as a collective. That's, that, is, that is the law as I understand it. Okay, well, you, you may have made more expertise on that element than I do, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, be educated on that. But uh, again, I don't, I don't know exactly where you draw the line between people sort of uh, acting 
in a concerted fashion and people just uh, agreeing on a set of ideas. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.